I am beginning a series of talk that I call Teen Struggles. My nephew reached out to me and asked me, teach me something, uncle. And I was like, what do you want to learn? And he said, I want to know about teen struggles. Though I went to some specific questions, which area I really wants to know. And then this ideation dawned on me that I don't just need to help him. There are other things out there who would need to hear whatever thing I want to tell him. So that's why I'm making this video and I'm making it like a series because I have a few things I want to talk about. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome if this is your first time. I am OM Akpan. In today's video, I want to speak about peer pressure, competition and comparison. So let's get right into it. The first thing, peer pressure. You have a real need to be seen, to be heard, to be yourself and be able to express yourself and also to belong. And all of these are valid need of every human being. Because the teenage age is actually an age of transition, whereby you are leaving being a child to becoming an adult. And this is an age that you want to be independent, but you are a little naive to life. So you are trying to be yourself and be independent because you are learning how to become an adult. It is a transition that is not easy to navigate. Now, you want to really be understood you just want to express yourself and most times let me slow down a little bit it could feel like your parents or the people who are adults in your life are not seeing you they don't get you they don't understand you and in your experience it feels like your peer groups understand you because they listen to you they allow you be a king or a queen in your own world they allow you have the ground, express yourself and be real. They actually create a safe space for you and you feel like you are safe to share anything with them. No wonder this bond is strong. And to dig a little deeper into this, when you are looking for the right words to express yourself or tell how you feel, you may not really have the words, but when you get among your peers, it feels like in your experience, they say the right words and it feels so freeing and raw and real to you at this point you have respect for your peer groups because they are your safe space and it happens in life that every adult have respect for their safe space because they'll they are not judged they'll they are not criticized harshly so they feel safe being themselves in that space now to make this productive for you, the tendency for you as a young person or a teen to be conformed to your peer group or your peers, your mates, your friends is very high because these people are the greatest influencers in your life at this age. Whether they are close by or they are not in this age of social media, they could be online, but they relate to what your heart longs for or what you really desire so it feels like these are the people that are leading the way for you these are the people you want to represent your life after they have this tendency to draw your attention and draw you to be conformed to their values and to their norms you have a valid need to be seen and you don't want to be rejected that is why these are the only people that you feel like in your experience are seeing you and you have the fear of rejection so you don't want to be rejected even though they may not be the right people for you to hang around but you hang around them because they see you and because you don't want to be isolated or lonely you have the fear of isolation so that is why this influence to be conformed to their values is strong also the aspect of the fear of missing out you want to belong and you don't want to miss out they are partying they are doing all these things and because you're like other things are having this freedom why am i not having and all of that and as a christian teen this is what i'm bringing to you and i'm speaking to you sammy my nephew and every other person that is watching now being a teen all this is to say peer pressure is a big thing in your life whether from afar or close by peer pressure is a big thing you could just imagine this is my mate this is my age mate my classmate 
this is around my age. I was there, but can I submit the right fear that you need to have instead of the fear of rejection, the fear of isolation, the fear of missing out, the fear of failing or making miserable mistakes, or the fear of not being loved or cared for, or the fear of not having people around you, which is still isolation. Can I present an LD fear for you? It is the fear of the Lord. Growing up as a teen was difficult growing up. Because I did not feel that loved. It didn't mean my parents did not love me. I did not feel like I had much attention. And of course, since I didn't feel that, I didn't even want attention again. I actually wanted independence. I wanted to be on my own. And I cannot deny the fact that I was influenced by my peers. The conversations we have, the things we do. And the only thing I can say kept me in line with God is the fear of God. As scripture lets us know that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now as a teen, the most important thing you need in your life is wisdom. And because there's a real desire in teens to be rich, they say that Solomon prayed to God and God gave him wisdom and became the richest man. And all I thought about was God just give me wisdom so that I can become rich like Solomon. Like he was a wisest person. I'm one of the richest, even till date. And I'm like, God, I need that wisdom. And my mind was fixated on the riches. And it's very, it's an important thing. But how to get the wisdom is the fear of the Lord. And let's read the scriptures in Proverbs chapter 1. If you want to know how to live in a good way, you must first learn to respect the Lord with fear. Fools refuse to listen to wise teaching. So as I said earlier, as a young person or as a teen, the most important thing you need in your life is wisdom. We are in an age that you have so much information, but even with the enormous information, it can get you confused because you are not getting understanding. You don't have understanding and wisdom to know how to apply these information you are getting. You would think something is wisdom or a particular statement or word or an information you get is a wise information when it feels good to you. If it feels good, you could feel like it is wise. But I want to let you know that in truth, it is not everything that feels good or resonates with you that is wise. Such that when you are amongst your team and then you want to conform to them, the fact that whatever they say resonates with you and feels good to you doesn't mean it is the wise thing or is a wise advice, a wise suggestion, a wise opinion. The only place you can find wisdom is when you start fearing the Lord. And when I talk about fearing the Lord, I know I was introduced to an unhealthy fear of God, which I will actually do a video on this very part. But all I mean is, before you do any single act, before you make any single move, even as a young person, all you need to do is ask yourself, is this honoring God? Will this be acceptable before God? Will I respect God if I get to do these things that my teens are suggesting, that my friends, my mates are suggesting? If I get to do these things, are they going to honor God? Is it going to be right before God? Is it acceptable? Is it morally fit to do? So when you start to live your life and ask the good question at every turn, you are being introduced to wisdom. And the best thing for you to do is to get in the word of God so that you can learn what is right before God. Not what a preacher is saying, but read your Bible and learn what God wants you to know about him so that you would know this is right or this is not right. Before I do a thing, let me ponder again. Is this right before God? Is this acceptable? Is this respectful to God and to man? Before I follow my peers, I will consider this and take it into consideration. This could save you from peer pressure. Now, let me give you these few scriptures that talk about what to do with your peer pressure. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, it says, Flee evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace. Along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Flee 
all youthful lust. I know when the church talk about youthful lust most times, all they focus on is the sexual sin, which is part of it. But youthful lust spans through the love of money, which is greed and avarice, which is what has led a lot of young men and young people to do things they are not supposed to do. The love of money, the need to belong, which they are looking for their identity, is a real desire, but then the devil pushes them to belong in places they are not supposed to belong, really. Meddling with substances and, you know, taking weed, being on colors and whatever they call it. And these are the youthful laws. And scripture says, run, flee. So every form of drug abuse or use of weed and drug and all the evil sexual ambitions, all of these are all part of the youthful lust. And all scripture is saying is, flee these things, but then it tells you what to do. It does not just say, avoid this. It tells you the right thing to do. It says, pursue. Run away from these bad things and run after righteousness, love, peace. You're not running alone. What you need to do is you have to find a good community around you, amongst your peers. Who are those that have the same mind like you, who are seeking God, who wants to serve God, who wants to honor God? Can you get together along with them so that you can pursue righteousness, you can pursue peace, you can pursue holiness? Then get to be together and call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Now, this is a beautiful peer pleasure. If you can have a good community around you who are guiding you, you are in a beautiful place. You don't need to be enamored by the peer pressure that is dragging you out from the presence of God. You need to be with those who are actually drawing you in to know more of God. Stop fooling yourselves. Evil companions will corrupt good morals and character. Again, in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10, it says, When peer pressure compels you to go with the crowd and sinners invite you to join in, you must simply say no. You have to simply say no. Listen to the advice of older people who mean well for you, even though it may not feel right now. You don't need to understand everything. You just need to seek what is right and live well. Number two, competition. Now, when I talk about competition, sometimes you can grow up and see life from the lens of having to become the winner in life. And it could look like the need of trying to live to outshine others as if to be the winner. Maybe to take the first position somehow. Because it's actually the idea that as you are in school, there is a competition mindset that is involved in your academics, which is you are, you are aiming to get high grades, you are aiming to be the best student and all of that. But when you come to life, you have to know as you are going to become an adult, life is not a competition. Life is not a game. So it is not a situation whereby you are like, I need to win because if I don't win, another person will win. No, I want to submit this to you. We can all win in life without hating on each other, without having to, you know, envy each other and be like, because this person has won, now I'm going to lose. No, nobody circumvents your shine. Nobody takes your shine or sidestep you in your shine because they are shining. It is for you to know life is not competition. You are unique. You are in your own lane. And all you need to do is find your lane as you are growing. It is not to start competing with this person. Oh, I need to be married before this person. I need to build a house or get a job before this one or do this before. It is not a competition. You are only stressing yourself out by thinking about trying to get something before someone. And the reality is that some people have a home advantage than you based on your background and your home where you come from. There are some people that they already have a good background that gives them an easy flight. And you, you have to struggle and beat yourself up to even grow. You don't even have money to wear good clothes and all of that. You don't even have money to eat well from home. So now this can drive you into doing things you should not do because you're trying to compete with people you should never have tried to compete. Life is not about competition. And I know that 
in the society we live today, a lot of young people have competed, like they have lived life as if it's a competition, and get to put their hands to do things they are not supposed to do. And this has now held them on the neck, choking them and asking for their life in return. And you don't need to get there. You are not competing with anybody. God wants you to know you are not in competition. So whenever you want to feel the feelings of competition or you feel like you need to compete to win in life, to be higher than someone else, to, to be a force, to get something before someone, to get married before someone, or to get this or that before someone, know that life is mainly about being contented. Contentment is the greatest ingredient that you can learn at this stage of your life. Be contented with who you are. Be contented with where you are. Be contented with you. And contentment does not mean complacency. Neither does it mean compromise. In this aspect, competing will lead you to compromise your good values to join sinners when they entice you and consent. Instead of saying no, you say yes. Because now they are bringing these ideas, telling you, you know, if you do this, you can put our money in one bag, you can get enough money, and we can build a dynasty. Like sweet ideas that sounds good to you. They will say things trying to drag you away in manners that it's actually enticing because that's the word. It is enticing. It is luring. And you don't need to allow yourself to have the heart or the mindset of, I need to compete. Be contented. Let me offer this to you. Maintain your lane. If somebody goes ahead of you to gain success or get somewhere, it should be a proof to you that it is easy to get there too. That is their time. They have gotten there. Then it should be a thing. Instead of being envious and jealous, it should be a drive to you. If this person could get there, I too will get there. I too will work hard get some work ethic and i will climb i will go up i will go higher scripture says in first timothy chapter 6 but godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it but if we have food and clothing we will be content with that the last thing that i'll talk about in today's video is comparison now, growing up, there are so many things that will lead you to want to compare, especially around the physical changes in your body as a teenager, as a young person. Because if you are too tall, people will still have complaints about a part of your body that is not developing well that will make you feel shame. If you are too short, people will still complain. If you are too thin, people will still complain. If you are too fat, you still have people who would complain and all of this criticism from these different areas whether you're tall you're, you're you're short you're fat you're thin all these things affect your self-esteem and you start comparing now you're fat and you desire to be like a thin person the thin person is desiring to be to have some fat in their body because they look tiny now the tall person wants to just be average because they get into trouble so quick and they cannot even be themselves. They have to pretend not to be themselves. The short person is trying to, you know, be known. So all these insecurities come from this comparison because you've not come to own up to know who you are and it's a real experience in life. And this doesn't stop at teenage age or adolescence age. There are so many adults today who have insecurity because they did not deal with some of the insecurities as they were growing up. Some of the comparison that went on in their mind as they were growing up. And even with this, the social media challenge of this age is now curating these experiences to make you compare more. Because you're trying to create an online persona, a perfect image for people to look at you and see you like, young ladies want to be sexy. Young men want to go into things. They, you want to be seen at all costs. It is a real desire, but comparison will never lead you into a good place. Instead, it will make you insecure and make you lose your self-esteem. Personally, I experience comparison in my own way. I'm not that tall. I'm not tall, let me say so clearly. You know, and 
I'm, I was very thin and bony. That people made fun of me that I'm too bony, I'm too thin, and my head was like bigger than my body. So my head couldn't fit my body. But look at me now. At least I know I look good, and my head fits my body now. It means I was in transition. As a teen, if you're not okay with your body, you are in transition. So anybody in transition knows that transition is not a place of perfection. It's a place of progress. Transition is not a place whereby you feel like you are complete. It's a place that sometimes you are confused. You don't even know. And sometimes this transition is not just about the physical things, which the physical things play a big part. Even emotionally, you are in transition. Your hormones and everything in your body are changing. You are trying to understand yourself. You are trying to know yourself. So it brings you to compare. Is everybody going through what I'm going through? Is everybody, is everybody feeling what I'm feeling? So you want to go see things out by yourself. Let me figure this out. And then you get to explore. You want to explore to discover so many things. It can really be messy when you don't have good counsel. When you're not seeking counsel. Whenever you feel confused. Look for someone you can trust, an adult, somebody that's older than you, that you can trust, you know, loves you, have, you know, good opinion about you. Even if you want to reach out to me, let me know in the comment section. I can drop an email. We can talk. So don't be limited in reaching out to people. I know sometimes you may have a time trying to open up, but learn to open up so that you can, you know, let out these lies because these are lies from the enemy. You know, this is the age that so many young people don't feel confident in who they are, in their body, the way they look, and all of that. And they start feeling like maybe I need to become a man. If you are a woman, I need to turn from a female to male. And all these nuances that is affecting people's mental health today. Because social media has put a lot of things in the young people's mind. And so much information is kind of like an overload. Just like you are on your phone and there's too many things and your phone has not been cleaned up. So now it's bugging, it's hanging. This is where most times young people get to. And they are hanging because so many things, so much information, no understanding, no wisdom. And then they have compared and then criticized themselves and all of that and have no place to ease off of this. You are in transition right now. You may never get the six pack right now, but you can go walk out if you want to. You may never get the birds. Like I grew up not having birds and I was looking at Every other young people my age and some of them was even older than them with birds and it was all full. I couldn't blame myself at some point when I grew up because I realized that I'm not just Airy. I'm not Esau. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of Jacob-like. So I'm not Harry. I didn't have birds and it, it used to feel a way because I was like, when we get to places, you see that these people are regarded like they are the senior ones. And it will affect my self-esteem because I'm looking like a very small boy. And it, of course, it did affect me. So sometimes not looking the way you want to look, a certain way you want to look, can really affect you. But you need to stop comparing. Instead of comparing, learn to know who you are and be confident in who you are. Do not have the big breast, the big behind as a lady, or all the things you wish to have. What you need to know in all of this is that none of your physical looks really defines you. No, it does not define who you are. It does not define who God has made you to be or to become. There is always something in you that somebody can make fun of or make a joke of, which will affect you internally. I used to be made fun of in my hand being a dry hand, like sandpaper hand and all of that. And then I felt bad. I, I, like I didn't know what to do with that. And I will compare when I greet people, you know, shake people's hands and their hands are all soft and mine is as hard as whatever. I'm like, growing up now, I can do hard things in my hands. So there is a purpose for everything. And scripture says, you are a masterpiece. Now, let me read this scripture to you to encourage you. Psalm 139, verse 13 and 14. You formed my innermost being, shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside. And wove them all together in my mother's womb. I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Oh my. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it. How thoroughly you know me, Lord. 
So it's more about God who made you and knows you. Don't be so carried away with how you look and losing confidence because you're not looking the way you see the social media images. You're not looking that way and then you're feeling bad for yourself and that start defining you. Don't let that define you. God made your frame for a particular purpose that he wants you to fulfill. How you look and your frame, which is your body, does not define where you are going to. Does not define what God has on your life. If you try to compare, you always find what to compare. You, if you want to compare up, you always find people who are higher than you. You always find people that you are better than in your level. But all you need is just be yourself. Own up to who you are and love yourself for real. This is the best advice I can give you at this point. Do well to subscribe to this channel and hit the like button if you like this video. Share it to other teens and other people you would like to see this video. And also, this series will continue next week. Do not forget to drop a comment and let me know how this has helped you and the questions you would have. Thank you so much for watching. And shout out to Samuel, my nephew. Shout out to all the teens out there who have watched this video to the end. God bless you and you have a bright future. I pray that you will not miss all that God has for your life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Bye-bye.